So, uh, gel electrophoresis. You need to know uh, what you might use it for and well, when you might use it, I suppose. So, um, what gel electrophoresis is, is it's a technique, sort of physical technique, of separating DNA fragments by size. It's actually a technique you can use to separate lots of things, so amino acids that all have different sizes and charges at particular buffer solutions, you can use electrophoresis for that. You might come across that in chemistry perhaps. Um, the only place that it's on your syllabus is in separating DNA fragments by size. Now, if you were separating things with different charges, you'd need to put your stuff in the middle so it could go in either direction. But this works because DNA fragments a negative charge. What does that mean? It means they move to a positive electrode. So, how do we set it up? What do the results mean? So, a gel electrophoresis tank is a sort of a square plastic box. It's got a well at each end and this uh, is for the electrodes to stick into. I have a positive one there, a negative one there. And obviously they need connecting up to um, an electricity source and um, batteries we tend to use. And this whole thing is filled with a gel. It's made of sort of a, it's like an agar gel. It's called an agarose gel. And in your agarose gel, you can dig out or make, while you're making the gel, some little wells to put your DNA sample in. If we looked at it from the side, this bit will be full of the agarose gel, and then into that, so that it fills up the bits at each end and covers the gel. You put a buffer solution and that all that's going to do is conduct the electricity. So what are these wells for? These wells are to put uh, DNA fragments in. <coughs> so where do we get those DNA fragments from? We're using those from, say, uh, using the Sanger technique, where you're stopping the DNA replication at different points to get different sized fragments, or you can use restriction endonucleases, for example, if you're looking for a gene or if you're doing a DNA fingerprint. <coughs> so, you're filling your well with those DNA fragments, and generally you'd use a, what's called a loading die as well. Um, all that is, is so that you can see where you know, how far along it's gone. It's just to make a colour. Obviously DNA is transparent and DNA fragments are too tiny to see anyway. 
so the loading dies just to let you know okay where, when's it got to this end and how far has it got so as you switch on the current your DNA fragments are going to move and the bigger ones find it harder to squeeze through the gaps in the gel so what you get is a separation of your DNA fragments by size. The ones that move furthest are the smallest and the ones that move less far are the largest or the longest. What you might also find reference to is um, DNA probes and if you remember in the Sanger sequencing they were using fluorescent markers so you can use fluorescent markers and use UV light to detect them or you can use different fluorescent markers um, and, and look at peaks on a graph. So that's particularly used in Sanger sequencing, UV light. Um, you can use uh, radioactive probes. to identify particular base sequences. So if you think, you know, your DNA, you might have a, a gene in there, you're not interested in those sequences, you're only interested in those repeats. So you might use a DNA probe and then you can use uh, the technique of autoradiography to get your image. And of course you can photograph these to get your image. So, um, that's kind of it for gel electrophoresis. You just need to know the smallest fragments move furthest, the biggest ones stay where they are, and you get this kind of banding pattern. Um, and we'll look at genetic fingerprinting and how unique that is and what we can use that for in a future presentation.